Welcome students, welcome back to DOPA crash classes. Now we have to discuss about the difference, basic difference between the active and passive immunity. Active immunity, so I will make this in a column. Active, the basic difference between active and passive immunity. Active immunity is a kind of immunity which is imparted into the host body by means of certain antigens. And passive immunity is imparted to the host body by means of certain antibodies. That is the basic difference. And you have to understand this active immunity actually require, actually require, uh, is very slow actually, is actually slow. And, but this persists longer, this persists for a long period of time. Maybe the entire lifetime, this active immunity will be there. But this passive immunity, this is very quick in action but the issue is this persist this persist very short term or this persist for a small period of time and you will be getting the clear picture when we, we when we describe the examples for this the example you can example you can discuss in uh, nat in two ways natural active immunity is there then artificial active immunity is there here also example natural passive immunity is there then artificial passive immunity is there just short form only i will write so natural active immunity one of the common example is simply our chicken pox hope you know this chicken pox once so uh, for example once you are stuck with this chicken pox in your childhood you won't be getting the second infection second or third infection you will be prevented from this getting the second infection because of this active immunity and one of the example for artificial active immunity yes the very good example for this is vaccination i think you are very familiar with this vaccination nowadays because the covid vaccination has recently launched in our world so this vaccination also in vaccination you will be learning this vaccination in the sec in the next subsequent topic vaccination in this vaccination actually ready made killed or inactive antigens are actually administered into the body so that our body will recognize this and the second time if the actual infective antigen comes our body will be well equipped to uh, act against it okay so that we will be protected and this will be persisting for long period of time and about this passive immunity as i have told we uh, there is antibodies which is working in this and the example for this natural passive immunity is colostrum I hope you know this colostrum that is the first milk which is delivered into the baby this colostrum actually contains which antigen hope you know that is our IgA antibody sorry antigen it is not antigen antibody colostrum contains the antibody that is IgA immunoglobulin A and also I hope you know the IgG is the only antibody which crosses the placenta that is also an, another example for this natural passive immunity naturally the child is getting these antibodies and artificially are there any situation in which we are artificially injecting certain antibodies to the host organism that actually demands a dangerous situation you have to uh, you have to think in such terms a dangerous too dangerous situation too dangerous situation in which antibodies are artificially artificially injected what are those two dangerous situation you know one is one is the usage of antitoxins one is the usage of antitoxins and second one is the usage of what you know anti venom antitoxins are used in two situations number one is diphtheria and number two is tetanus actually this diphtheria and tetanus as we, we have discussed these are actually prevented by this could be prevented by vaccination suppose an unimmunized or unvaccinated child got this I mean, uh, got uh, got encountered with this uh, with the bacteria causing these infections. They will be getting this infection, and if they are stuck with this infection, it is it is it is advised to administer the antitoxins as soon as possible, and also anti venom we are administering to the individual when they are stuck with a snake bite or when they caught any snake bite, they will be they'll be getting administered with a snake bite there is exam in this or in this antitoxin administration and anti-venom administration we are actually 
directly injecting the antibodies against it, against the antigens which is coming okay and that actually persists for that particular purpose only and if the same individual gets the snake bite for another time we have to administer next antivenom like that like that okay hope you got some idea on the basic difference between this active and passive immunity so thank you